Hi, and welcome to Knitting Downsized. My name is Katie, and this is a podcast about knitting. And there's been some changes. <laughs> it used to be about knitting and life in a camper. Um, but as you can tell from my background, we have since um, moved and we purchased a little house um, that we found kind of out of the area a little bit. And we have kind of set up life here. So um, a lot has changed in the last couple months, <laughs> uh, which is why I haven't been able to podcast. We've been fixing the house up and kind of changing things around. School let out a couple weeks ago, so we had field trips and end of year stuff. So it's been kind of crazy around here. I hope you guys have been well. I hope um, everything is going okay for you guys. And of course, I hopefully, well, I don't think I did much knitting. It's been kind of crazy around here. Uh, so to start off with, this is my newest FO. This is a project that I started with yarn that I felt like was kind of cursed. I tried to do multiple projects with this yarn and it just would not come to fruition. I could not get this to work in any type of project. So I finally found, um, I saw where there's kind of a, um, a thing going around Instagram, I think, where folks are using spin cycle to do just these short sleeve tees, kind of cropped tees, and just letting the color change go as it, you know, as it may. So I had this yarn. This is what I have left. And it is Noro. It is, I believe, their bulky weight. I, because I've tried this yarn multiple times on a couple different projects, I have totally lost the tags. So I don't know which one it is. Uh, but I purchased it from Sun Dragon in Brevard, North Carolina. If you check out their website, I know they have it on there. It's more of a worsted Aran weight. It's pretty, it's pretty bulky. As you can see so it's kind of thick and thin I guess like all Noro is so that really confused me and kind of threw me for a loop because I thought I could do like a DK worsted pattern and then that didn't work and so I tried to do a worsted chunky weight pat or Aaron weight pattern and that didn't work so what I did because I saw that folks were doing this just a basic T a circle yoke pattern and they were using all different patterns. Um, I think some were even using raglans, but I wanted to do the circle yoke. I didn't want a, a raglan increase right here. So I went to Drop's website and found a pattern that I thought I liked. <laughs> it had some kind of weird uh, eyelet stuff going on, but I just used the numbers for the size that I thought would work and did the increases right along with the pattern and then did the, I'll stand up so you can kind of see, and did the body as long as I wanted and then picked up for the sleeves and miraculously <laughs> it turned out good. So I absolutely love this, this little sweater with my, um, with my leftovers. I'm going to make Fiona, my daughter, a tea, hopefully, or maybe even this yarn goes a really long way. I guess because of the weight that it is, um, I'm either going to make her a tea or maybe like a little tank for summer. Where we moved in South Carolina, it is because it's off the mountain, it's probably like five to 10 degrees hotter than what we're used to in the mountains. So it is very different. There's going to be a lot of lighter weight knits coming up, just so you guys know. Oh, and Maggie Mae's still here. <laughs> she is super stoked. <laughs> um, so she's still here with us. You'll hear her tap around. We have um, hardwoods in here, so she's going to be tapping around. I apologize for that in the background, but it's life with a dog, and I'm not going to lock her out. So this is my newest FO that I finished. This I finished um, a couple months ago, and you'll have to forgive me. I just washed it, and it's been laying flat to dry. It is... Um, my worsted ripple crop top. 
It is by Jessie May. And I love this. Absolutely love it. It turned out so well. Um, it is a little bit more cropped than I like, but I wear some really um, high-waisted shorts or high-waisted pants with it, and it fits amazing. And Maggie got up on the bed <laughs> where you guys are. Okay, so um, I really, really like this pattern. I think I've told you guys this multiple times. I've made it multiple times. I made it for my daughter, for um, for myself, for I think for God. I'm really sorry for friends, and I just love it. Uh, the yarn that I used is a cotton yarn that I purchased at the Outer Banks in North Carolina um, over Thanksgiving break, and it's the Sestari, and it is their pink heather colorway. So it only took, I think, three balls because I purchased five. She's such a wonder. <laughs> so I purchased five skeins and I only used three. So I have two left. So I think Fiona's gonna get a matching one as well because she's she likes pink a whole lot. So I don't know. I've got it here just in case um, I want kind of an easy project. To me, this type of like um, uh, ribbed project is really kind of mindless and it is just a really good project for me to do when I'm busy and or life is busy and I need um, you know something that isn't like super hardcore so um, and like confusing um, so those are my FOs that I have finished so I have almost finished something um, that I am really super excited about I, I started a couple months ago and I have since um, snag, not snagged, but I just kind of postponed it. Um, it's kind of a hot project. Um, and I wanted to kind of wait for it for a little bit. So I have said that I wanted to do the pressed flowers wrap and then the pressed flowers cardigan, but I, I think it's steeped and I've never done that before. So I have waited and waited because I think she hinted that there was going to be a pullover it came out, I purchased it that very day, and started my pressed flowers pullover. So it is raglan, um, and it is such a cool pattern. I thoroughly enjoyed this, and like I said, I, I've picked up for the sleeves. Um, I just have to, you know, start them and get them going um, so I can finish. But I love this. So this yarn is um, Leading Men Fiber Arts and it's a discontinued base for them. You guys check out Leading Men. They have awesome yarn. I have purchased lots of yarn from them. Um, they have a really cool colorway. It's Max from um, oh, the book. Goodness gracious. Where the Wild Things Are, I believe that's like one of their colorways, and it is such a cool blue with speckles and stuff that I made um, another tea in. <laughs> so I highly recommend their yarn. I have used, um, I think, three or four of their lines, and their color is just impeccable, and um, it doesn't, um, like, bleed. Uh, this is such a dark gray. I was worried about that because the color that I'm using with it... Um, is kind of light and I was worried but I haven't had any trouble it hasn't come on my hands or anything I believe this is an old label too this was um, a discontinued um, and that's the, the colorway this was a discontinued color or maybe yarn weight that was at SAF that I purchased a sweater quantity of so highly recommend them check them out um, and then this is the yarn that I have with it, and it is, well, oh, here we go. It's nice having my shelf right here. I can just grab stuff out. So it is Feederbrook, Feederbrook Farms, Entropy DK, and this is their oxidation colorway. So I've had this for a little while, kind of waiting. Um, because I love turquoise and mustard, and I tried 
to do this sweater in a mustard um, with this and I just didn't like it. The gray just has turned out so much better than I could ever hope for. So um, I highly recommend um, the Feederbrook Farm Entropy DK for a spin cycle substitute. Um, if that's what you want to do. Spin cycle is a little bit out of my budget, especially for my size um, and the amount of yardage that I would need. Um, so this at um, Sun Dragon is a little over $30 and it's 260 yards um, of DK. So it's a it's um, 100 grams, I believe, instead of, I think, yeah. Uh, spin cycle I think is sold in 50 grams so check them out um, Sun Dragon has all their, the colorways online that you can purchase and they do some really cool discounts if you follow them on Instagram you can um, they post about different discount codes um, all the time so check them out they also uh, Feederbrook has a um, fingering weight as well you can tell it's been a long time since I've podcasted, but they have a fingering weight as well um, that I really like. I'm not a fingering weight person, but now that I live farther south, I might become a fingering weight for this person with as hot as it is down here. So um, I think those are mostly the pro projects that I've worked on. I do want to tell you about a pattern that I was um, approved to test. And I totally botched it, unfortunately. Um, I started it and then had to pull it out um, because I didn't like the colors. And I got all the way through the yoke and pulled it out instead of finishing it because I didn't like the colors. It was in this Pearl Soho and then that bright pink way over there. Um, I wanted it to be kind of a... Um, spring summer sweater and then because it is all over color work um it was just too heavy and it was just not working out so I chose different colors and I'll show you that here in just a second this is the choose your adventure sweater and it is by gray owl knits g-r-e-y owl knits also known as sarah kelly um so she <laughs> approved me to um to test my size and like I said I totally botched it I didn't, wasn't able to finish it but we were moving and we've had a ton of changes in our life um in the last couple months and I just wasn't able to finish so but I do want to brag on this pattern she has a um a children's pattern coming up I believe or it's already out this is the sweater and you can see why I wanted to knit it <laughs> It has campers and RVs and all kinds of really cool color work charts. So the way that this is written, um, the top right through here, so the little mountains into the trees is the same for every size. Um, it's, it's like it's not really like choose your adventure right through there because um, she gets you through all your increases and everything like that that you need in that little bit. The rest of this sweater is choose your own adventure. So she's got, um, uh, I think, 10 charts, I want to say. It's a ton of charts um, in different sizes um, and different mo like different motifs. It's just really cool. They're all themed around adventure or um, being out, like outside stuff. There's um, like the canoe, there's a, um, a hammock, there's a fire, there's all kinds of really cool like outdoorsy motifs um, that you can pick from. She even has like a simple um, lice stitch that you can do if you wanted to just do this top piece. She's got other trees that you can pick from um, and she tells you how to incorporate that into your sweater and I mean this pattern I think um, I don't want to show you all the charts but um, because the charts are like so cool I don't I don't want to but I just want to brag on it. It is such a cool sweater and it, she goes through line by line with you kind of how to construct it in different sizes. I mean, there's tons of sizes as well. Um, uh, super duper size inclusive. There's 11 sizes 
that you can choose from. And they're from 36 and a half inches to 69 and a half inches. So I believe it's worn with two to four inches of positive ease. So, um, but you can do an all over like full body color work, which is what I want to do eventually. Um, or you can just pick, you know, to do just the top or just a portion or however you want to do it. I just think it's such a cool pattern. Um, I highly recommend it. Go check her out. She's got some other patterns um, up for sale that I just, I think you should go check her out and look at. So I chose to use, um, I pulled a sweater out and I've already pulled stitches out. Um, that was a Brooklyn Tweed sweater that I, I don't know if you guys remember, I messed up and messed my um, raglan increases up, I believe. And I, it wasn't as deep as I needed it to be. So I felt like I was in that movie, the fat guy in a little coat. I couldn't put my arms down. So I, no ma'am, no ma'am, go on please. So I um, am using the Brooklyn Tweed. That's Fiona. I don't think I've introduced you guys to them yet. I don't really want them to be on YouTube famous, but so this is the, the Brooklyn Tweed in the, uh, you can't really see it very well. Um, there, that's kind of, it's kind of this, uh, it's Hayloft. And then this right here is Poppy in Highland. Um, it's Highland by Hairsville Designs. Um, so it's kind of a very like bright ready orange and as you can see there's the, the mountains so I got this far when I redid it Mommy? and I'm working on I know you don't please go sit down please go I'm almost done I'm almost done I'll be right there with you so um yeah so I'm almost done with the yoke and hopefully um I can finish this in the next couple months because I really would like to wear it in the fall. So, um, and of course I'm always using my Chiagus. Uh, they were my favorite needles. Um, so I think that's it. It's been a crazy couple of months. So, <laughs> I'm sorry about all this. It's been kind of a crazy day, but um, I wanted to just step in and say, hey, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. I hope you enjoy your knitting and um, it was really great to talk to you guys today. I'm going to try to start uh, podcasting once a week again, um, but my work schedule is kind of crazy, so I don't know how it's going to go. But I just wanted to stop in and say hey and share my thinnest objects as well as my works in progress. So I hope you enjoy your knitting. Keep knitting. Um, and hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Bye.